right, I want to do um, a landscape painting, and I'll do it in real time. And I'm going to use this photo right here as the um, uh, the reference photo. So let me tell you about this photo. This is a photo from a video uh, from the channel by Eva Zubek. And um, it's the video titled Four Months Living in My 4x4 Expedition Truck. And um, she makes these amazing videos and she's um, been a lot of places that I'll never ever get to. This place is Albania. And uh, if you get a chance to watch the video, she does, uh, she has an amazing story. I guess prior to this visit here, she um, was attacked by a cow. And uh, so Robert and I can relate to that because uh, we didn't get attacked by a cow, but we hit a cow with our car one night coming home. So it wasn't exactly the same thing, but but she said that the doctors left when they told when she told them that. So all right, so that's the, the reference photo. Now, now let me uh, I'm using the iPad and I'm um, how do I get rid of this now? How do I get rid of that picture? Okay. So I'm using the iPad and I'm using the Procreate app. Let me show you what Procreate looks like. Um, there it is. That's the Procreate. Oh, is it backwards? I don't know if it turns it around later on or not. But anyway, that's what it looks like. Um, so we're going to start with a blank page or a blank canvas. And um, I'm going to use my, my Apple Pencil to, to point at the thing. So point here and then go to Canvas. And then go to uh, Reference. And I already had it set up, but if I, if I didn't have it set up, I would go to import and then it would allow me to pick which picture I wanted to use as a reference photo. So I'm using this one right here. Okay. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to rough it in. And I'm going to do my best to try to explain every step of the way what I'm doing. So first, I make it about the same size as the, uh, the reference photo just to kind of give my idea uh, give myself an idea of where I want things to to be hold on I gotta move it out of the way so now you see they're roughly about the same size maybe I'll make that one a little bit bigger so what we want to do is we want to um, sketch in that triangle shape um, that triangle shape that triangle shape and then this sort of uh, I guess uh, I guess that's a triangle and that'd be like a square. So that's the beginning right there. So let's do that. We're not trying to reproduce a photograph, by the way. So the brush I'm choosing is going to be the dry brush. And there it is right there. It's listed under uh, painting. You got all kinds of brushes on, on Procreate, but I'm going to use the, the painting category and I'm going to use the dry brush which is right there. If I wanted to adjust it, this is where I would do it, but I don't need to adjust it. I keep it just as it is. Um, the other, th other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make the background um, a light, a darker color. So I'm going to choose oh, a brown on the orange side. And so now you see here, when you look at the two, um, the two layers, you have the, the, the background layer, which is consistent it doesn't change unless you change it and then this layer that's the layer i'm going to be painting on okay so we're ready to go so here's how i change the colors now if you are familiar with procreate you know that you can use two different types of palettes the round one and the square one which is considered classic i uh for some reason like this one so i'm going to go there so let's start with the sky and we're going to move this over to the blue and we're going to take light blue. So now you see that little dot right there indicates that's the color that the uh, brush is going to paint. It's called a brush, even though it's a, a Apple pencil. Okay. Now over here is where I uh, make the brush size larger and smaller. And here is where I change the opacity of the brush. So I'll try to tell you everything as I go. If you've known some of this stuff, then... You don't need to hear it, but there it is. Okay, so now we have some blue ready to go. So I'm just going to start 
brushing it in and it's a little bit on the uh, saturated side it's a little bit too too blue but that's okay because we're going to change it anyway everything is correctable so there's that triangle i was talking about let me fix it a little bit make it a little bit lighter and it's good actually to mix them up anyway so it's not one color across the whole the whole area okay all right now we're going to go for this uh triangle here and i'm just going to make that a gray so i'm going to stick with the blue and i'll just go down here to a a grayer part of that and we'll go with that triangle and we'll, we'll be changing everything as we go along it's not a perfect triangle and you'll see as we get as we go through this it's got a little it's got a little lump right there so let's go ahead and put that in there and there we go now over here is another triangle and it's darker it's a little bit on the green side so i'm going to move this over a little bit to the green and keep it dark actually very dark and let me put this here this triangle Okay, we're going to change everything as we go along. There's two ways to uh, apply the paint to the canvas. One, you can tap it on, which gives it a very stroke painterly look. And the other way is to, <clears throat> to scrub it on like, like that and just keep it on the surface. Okay. Now down here we have, well, let, let's look at this for a second. There's a light color right there. So let's just go ahead and put some light down there so we kind of have that... Um, bookmarked in a way that's what we want that and back here there's a light a light mountain top that's peeking through I just don't want to forget that down here there's a I guess that would be a very dark green um, but not as dark as this area so let's try it yeah that seems to work okay and then a light gray over here looks like so that's the area of, over here okay so in a very very quick way I have laid down some of the basics of this and we're going to go through it now and and make it into a full landscape okay so let's go back to the sky and um, let's make some push push this back over to the blue make it some lighter and let's see how it looks yeah i'm gonna make the brush a little bit larger okay it looks pretty good okay and now let's take some of these uh grays from the mountain back there and we'll put some of them in there and they have they have vertical lines in them so it helps to just drag the the brush in a vertical way and then the green from the trees that are right there all just just laying down some basic stuff now it doesn't look so saturated so here we go okay and then some light more more yellowish greens over here in the foreground yeah and uh let's look at this a second there's some light like almost like olive green happening right there okay i think that's just shadows is what i think it is well i'll look at it closer as I get to it, and let's put some really dark down here. Looks like some really dark here. And then let's go back to that gray. It looks like the water goes over here more. The water goes back there. So it's almost it's almost starting to look like a a blurry picture. 
of, th of that. It almost looks blurry, like it was an out-of-focus camera or something. All right, let's get some dark, dark colors here, dark, dark greens, and make the brush smaller so we can start to put some of these, these vertical lines in there. I'm not trying to replicate it exactly. If, if I was doing a portrait of a person, you would absolutely have to focus to the point where you did it exact because, um, well, a portrait has to be exact. That's all there is to it. If, if you're doing a building, it's kind of like a portrait to a specific building. And I'm going to do the best I can to make this um, exact. All right, so now I'm just putting in some of the areas I see that are very dark. This looks like it's got dark shadows all over it. And I'm going to scrub some of it in, and I'm going to tap some of it in. Let's put a few few darks here. Okay. Now this looks like it needs to come down more. So I'm going to fix that. It looks like it goes down this way. Yeah, I think I didn't make it big enough. So that the water sort of has that look to it. And uh, I mean some of this less saturated green we come a little bit closer to the to the shore okay the dark green right here that I see that little loop right there that's looks like that's coming up from here and then in the background there's that very very hard to see mountain in the background so we want to make sure we put it there and we'll, we'll tweak it as we go all right let's put some light colors here and there some of the darker greens again up here it looks like the grass the green on that mountain looks like it comes down that hill right there and I'll push this here. Okay. Okay. Now you can see how it's starting to look like um, the, the the reference photo. It's starting to have a similar similar look to it. What I need to do now, though, is I need to look at it better because I did the rough. Now I need to look at it much closer. So I'm going to make it much closer. Let's see, where do I want to go? Let's go here to that mountain right there. So let's take the reference photo and also make it large. So now we can see that this area needs to look more like that area. So I'm going to... What, what I, I think what I want to do is I want to use a second layer here um, first I want to fix the sky a little bit I'm not completely happy with that sky a little bit lighter a little bit less saturated the sky is blue but not rich blue And then we'll go for the gray, for the clouds. And the, and the whites from the clouds. Let's see the whole sky here. Yeah, okay. Put some more gray in there. Looks like the bottom of the cloud might be ready to rain on somebody. And we'll put some blue over here. And some gray. Okay. All right, now let's open up the layers and add another layer. So now I have a layer on top of the layer I've already done. Now this is where I want to zoom in onto the mountain 
in the background. Let's get that one out of the way first. So it looks to me like it's mostly very, very, very light blue in color. You know what? It's probably more purple. So I'm going to go for the light, light purple. And that's where we go. Okay. So now, remember, this is another layer. And it should be darker than the sky, so I need to darken that. There we go. So that looks like it does that. And it goes up there. Goes down here. Okay. Now let's add some shadows. Very subtle. Subtle shadows. And then some lights, because it looks like the light is hitting the side of the mountain. Make the brush tip smaller. Looks like that goes up there. And then a little bit of dark, looks like, falls into that shaded areas. It looks like it's got some green in that, so let's go for the green. Very unsaturated green. to the purple. Okay, so there's that background um, mountain, that ba that mountain way in the distance. And everything is fixable, so if I didn't get it right, I'll fix it. Now let's look at this one that's more in focus, this one right here. So that is going to be this. So let's take the, uh, the green and... Uh, Make, make it dark and unsaturated. So let's do this. Let's see, it goes down below that thing. Okay. Let's get some light go colors in there. Let's get more gray. Now let's move over a little bit and uh, get some more of that green on the top here. Okay, now we don't have enough. It's not the same dimensions, but that's okay. We're just going to uh, 
keep keep sketching it in there so it goes from here to there okay again it's the the risk is making it too saturated so you gotta always be careful it's the green is not too green because in nature it's really rare for especially distance when you're in the distance from something it's very rare for it to be saturated okay looks like right here down here there's a little area of shadow that goes up there okay now we want to add some this gray here looks like some of the rock is just showing through and then over here it's almost white looks like it's right around here where it just kind of peeks through probably some sand or something coming through okay um, so our picture is not exactly like the reference photo because ours goes from there to there and then up there and it comes down right about there so let me try to cut it off there so I don't mess it up too bad all right now let's take some of the color from there and add it here Scrub it in some of the color from there and add it some of that color so we get some of these colors right and we'll tap it in there. Let's see, there we go, make it a little bit darker. Let's get this color over here. This over here. Let me get this. So we're still on that second layer now. And some of this. some of those light colors on top there again I have to I'm gonna have to zoom in on some of this and see if I got it right let's get some of those yellows in there and then we get some of those almost white colors okay so now let's focus on this area here. It doesn't look like much. It looks like a bunch of darks and lights. So let's do that. Let's put a bunch of darks. Looks like a bunch, just a bunch of darks and lights. And some of this in the sky, some of these little, uh, not in the sky, but up against the sky, the little branches in the distance. So I'll just do a little bit of pointillism kind of a thing. Okay. Now let's get some of those light white colors and put them down here because that's what I see back here. And over here on this side of it, too, there's some whites. Okay, let's, let's close this reference photo. Close it out, and that gives me a chance to look at it full size. The size, by the way, is 16 by 20. 
so if it gets printed it'll it'll be it'll look nice it won't be pixelated if you make it small and then make it large it becomes pixelated okay let's get our reference photo back and the uh, young lady is in the picture so I want to make sure I put her in there and she is right there you see her she is right there so where would she be in this picture so what we want to do first of all I'm going to open up a second a third layer just for her and she is right there so right about there so let's just take some dark color and just make a reference point so it looks like she's about there. And then there's a rock right next to her. There's a couple of rocks. So yeah, that's about where she is. Let's see. Okay, so that's where she is. In the water. Okay. Now that little black spot, that's where we want her. So we need need to put that there so we know about what size we want her to be. So now let's let's look at her. Let's let's expand the picture and expand the uh the sketch. And that doesn't look like her at all, does it? But what we're going to do is we're going to make it look like her. So, a little bit. So here we go. Here's the, the flesh tone of her skin, of her face. So let's just do that. And she's kind of got of a triangle face. And then the shoulders are over here. Coming down. Going down to the water. And her other shoulder is over here. Coming down to the water. I'm going to take my erasers. I made her. Whoa. I made her way too long. The arms way too long. Okay. So there we go. Let's make her arms again. There's her arm, her shoulder. And now her leg is about there. Let's see the chest, you can see. And there. Her other leg. This arm is coming here. Her hip is right about there. Okay, so there's the beginning of her. Um, I'm probably going to need to make it even bigger than that so I can see it better. All right, let me use this for her hair. I'm going to have to erase some of this. Now, let's see what I have there. Let me remove it and put it back in there. All right, let's 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 erase the stuff we don't need. Okay, we don't need that. Let's see. Don't need that. Looks like her shoulder goes that way. Okay, so I'm getting rid of all the the pieces that I had used um, to kind of get an idea of where she was. I can get rid of some of this white from the rock for now because I'm going to have to draw it in anyway. And we'll get rid of a lot of this. That won't be necessary. That was just a placeholder. 
All right, let's go back to making her look like a human. Okay. So let's take this. I'm going to make a second layer on her. And here we go. There. Let's see her hair color. And their arm. Make it a little bigger. A little bit darker over here on this side of her face. Okay. too much. Okay, she's got a yellow top on. The top part of the yellow top is almost white, and the bottom part of the yellow top is very much in the shadows. And let's see. Her arm comes out this way. Let's let's put the two. I'm gonna merge the two layers together. There we go. And now I'm gonna erase the arm that I made a mistake with. And this arm. Okay. Oops, that's a mistake. So that was do that. Put it a little bigger. I'm just sampling the colors from the reference photo, in case you wonder what I'm doing there.
This is probably taking just as long as the rest of the picture is going to take. All right, that, that arm is a little bit too far over. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. I wanted to, what I want to do is lasso it a little bit and bring that arm over just a little bit. Yeah, I think that's where I want it. Okay. Let's do this again. This time let's bring the head down a little bit. This thing's a little bit too high. Yeah, I think that's more like where it'll be. Okay. coming off of her arm or coming off her head I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the turpentine brush because it's got a little bit more, um, it's a little bit finer, but let me show you first how that looks. So she's like really small in the picture, you see, and you don't want to make it too perfect because it's, she's obviously in the distance. Um, so maybe I'll keep it like that. I gotta keep it like that. Yeah, because you just want the idea of of the girl in the water on the on the rock. Right, so so there's the the layer with the girl on it. Um, the other layer. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Let me get rid of the reference photo for a moment. Alright, open it up. Let's see what I did here. Let's see. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, we keep that one. So I'm going to merge that layer with this layer. So now all the background is one layer. And um, the girl is one layer. Sorry. Let me tell you, I can't remember her name. Um, let's, let's see. It is uh, Eva. Eva Zubek. I should know that. Okay. <laughs> okay. She does some really nice videos. Okay, let's get the uh, reference photo back open. And there it is. Okay, so now what we want to do is just a little bit more close up. We want to take that rock right there and we want to paint it in. We should make that a different layer though. Okay, make it a different layer. It's okay, I started. Okay, and then, of course, all this dark area under here. And then the other gray here for the rock. And the water that's around her. Look, okay, she's a bigger brush now. Yeah, I was going to use the uh, turpentine brush, and I still might. But right now, this one is working. Yeah, I have a tendency to want to make things look too photographic, and it's not always a good idea. So... And then a little bit of light color there for her hand. Because we want to have the, the sense that she's putting her hands in the water. Which I think she is in the video. her in the water and there's a rock right in front of her a couple of rocks so let's go ahead and put them in there first let's get rid of uh, I think that's on that layer yeah so let's get rid of this rock here so we'll erase that first okay now let's paint it back in Yeah, okay. So now that's her. So I'm going to make s m merge those two layers together. So there we are. Okay. Now let's do this rock here. Um, let's get the light part first. So she's got the rock is very close to her. dark areas in there. Okay. And uh, then a little, little off-color rock looks like right there. And then the water around the rock has the reflections of the rock in it so take some of that color from there and put it down into the water just enough and then some of her tones also down into the water reflecting a little bit okay and then some of this the white from the top of the rock there we go Okay, now, let's look at that a second. 
Let's look at the whole picture and see what I did wrong. Um, it looks a little wrong. So what I want to do, let me merge all those layers together. So that's just one that goes on and off. Now I think, I think she should be a little bit bigger and a little bit turned. I think it's a little bit on an angle. So let me twist it a little bit and make it a little bit bigger. Actually considerably bigger. So there. Now there she is in the water. And it doesn't look exactly like this picture, but we're getting there. We're starting to make it look like the landscape that we're copying it from. Um, all right, now let's take some of these close-ups here. Let's look at this close-up water. And we're going to put the water behind her. So I'm going to make a layer, and I'm going to be pulling it down behind her. So here we go. Grab some of that color from back there. Make a big brush. I'll we'll take some of those rocks right there. Make sure we get them in there. Okay. I think we should add a little bit more green to that. I'll take some creative license and add some green to that water. It's not really looking that way in the photograph, but okay. Now let's go back to this land here. Little pieces of light shining through. Okay, let me let me merge these two together so I can work on the whole body of water. Maybe that's on that layer right there. It is. All right. Well, we don't want that. We don't need that there. There. All right. Now we're going to work on the, the background. And a little bit at a time. It'll start to come together if I can stop using the eraser accidentally. Let's get some of this gray in here. And there's some rocks in the water. And let's put some light spots on those rocks. Some of those mountain colors. 
the rock in the background. Make it a little bit lighter. Some of this dark areas where the water creeps up into the edge of the, of the land right there. At this point, I think we can um, close the reference photo completely and just work from what we know about landscapes because it's hard to see it when it's so small. So I make it larger so that I can see it better. I think maybe she's leaning over a little too much. Right, I'm on the wrong layer. Let me go to the right layer. Just leaning over a little bit too much. So I'm gonna move her. There. I think that looks more natural. Okay. So now let's open up um, another layer. And on this layer, we're going to try to add all the things that make it come alive. So by that, I mean the darks and and the lights. So let's just try to remember what was here. This is all in the, the picture is accurate. It's, this is all greenery, shrubbery. And uh, this is some things we know and some things we see and some things we never are sure about. Okay. a little bit grayer. Okay. Okay, let's take this color here. Make a very light, <coughs> and then we'll put some just some lines in the water so it looks like flowing water. Especially around the rocks. To that sky now. That sky is still bothering me.
Okay, now the only thing I want to do is I want to add a layer to the whole thing. That's going to be a multiply layer. So you see the word multiply? And what that does is it enables me to take a, a gray. In this case, it's going to be a blue-gray. And I want to put it across the whole painting. And then I'm going to take the eraser, make sure it's set for the dry brush. And I'm going to start to lighten up the areas that need to be light. Like the background here with the trees, I mean with the sky, with that distant mountain, with the sides of these, this hill here and the top of this green area. And of course, the beach over here, the sandy shore, with, and of course she's got sun on her. It does the job. It makes it a little bit darker in those areas right there. Let's see, I don't know if you can tell it on the video, but see how it darkens those areas that should be darker. Okay. Whoops. All right. Well, there is our finished picture. So it's very impressionistic and it's very much a dry brush study. I'm not happy with what I did with her. No, I guess she looks okay. I guess she that's how she was sitting. Okay. Well, there you go. Thank you for watching. And, uh, of course, thank you to Eva Zubek. Eva Zubek. Thank you. And, uh, I will continue to watch and and be amazed at the different adventures you go on, not to mention how beautiful the photography is that you do. All right, that's it. Turning it off now.